This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether it's D-Day, Pearl Harbor, or Hiroshima, tragedies stick with us throughout time and redefine culture. So what about virtual worlds? Surely a safe place from freak terrible tragedies. Where we run around in these colorful utopian societies hand in hand with our fellow gamer. Well, not quite. Hackers rewriting code to simulate sexual assault. From bugs to glitches, online worlds have never been safe. From individuals seeking to wreak havoc upon other people. The graphics are so good, this attack is eerily realistic. With some moments so incredibly tragic that they remembered in our hearts for many years to come. This is the history of gaming tragedies. So our story starts in the 90s. Video gaming was having a revolution with the rise of the home console. PlayStation is the power of the workstation for fun and games in the home. Quietly in the depths of basement dwellers, through the stench of unwashed clothes and gamer flatulence, a dark, dark fruit was being created. Online multiplayer gaming. You're in this dark, nasty place. Pretty disgusting. Welcome to the world of doom. In 1996, Doom was released, with a unique ability to play online. And with this invention, gaming had stepped out of the Garden of Eden, and was now at the mercy of real people. So yeah, I like FPSs. Uh, what can I say? There's nothing like the rush of hunting people down and killing them. My hands are shaking, but I'm still shooting! I'm still getting the headshots! It's like, boom, headshot! Boom, headshot! Boom, headshot! This Britannia is but one of many in the multiverse that is Ultima Online. September 24th, 1997. A game by the name of Ultima Online is released to the world. Ultima Online was the brainchild of a guy called Richard Garriott, whose dream it was was to create these fantasy worlds that thousands of players could interact and play with each other. Richard and his game would coin the term MMORPG, meaning massively multiplayer online role-playing game. A genre that would eventually lead to millions of people trading their real lives for online virtual ones. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, can he add Eyes of the Beast to your hut bar? Stan, check your fury talents to boost your shouts. We see it would be on August 9th, 1997, where the creator, Richard Garriott, would enter Ultima Online as his character, Lord British. Lord British was revered as like PC gaming royalty. And so, as you would expect, Lord British's character was coded to be undefeatable. And so it would be on the 9th of August, 1997, where Lord British would do his tour of the realm, where he would bless the common people of a location called Castle Blackthorn, owned by a player called Lord Blackthorn. Now, as soon as Lord British arrived, in Castle Blackthorn, word spread. It was like the second coming of Jesus and dozens and dozens of people flocked to the center to go and see him. The lag was so bad when you typed something and pressed enter, it wouldn't pop up until five minutes later. And so the server was lagging badly and players could hardly move. And then all of a sudden, Lord British was engulfed in flames. As the fire built up, Lord British wasn't worried because he knew that he was undefeatable. And so he chose to stand there and endure the fire in front of his many minions. But then he noticed he was starting to take damage. Lord British panics and he tries to escape the fire, but because of the lag, he could hardly move. And tragically, he would collapse in a ring of fire in front of his many disciples. The people were in shock. Their beloved king had fallen right in front of them. And as Lord British's right-hand man, Lord Blackthorn, stood there and saw what had happened, he made a very controversial decision. He decided to spawn four massive demons in the center of Castle Blackthorn, who would not only completely lag out the server, but would in fact just obliterate all the people of Castle Blackthorn. Bearing in mind, most of these people were completely innocent. The lag rendered the players defenseless, and many of them died to these demons. Lord Blackthorn had just done a genocide on his own people. But you see, only one of the people were the murderer of Lord British. And that was a shirtless man wearing a kilt by the name of Reigns. Reigns was just an opportunist who was pickpocketing literally everyone in the area at the time. And he happened to come across a scroll of Firefield. He cast it and then ran away. But the reason that Lord British died, despite being impenetrable, was because of a server wipe they'd done very recently, which had accidentally removed Lord British's invincibility. <laughs> And so, as it was found out that Reigns was the person who did the murder, Lord Blackthorn decided to ban him from Ultima Online and any other character that he might make in the future. And this ban wasn't exclusive to just Ultima Online, but in fact, any game made by Origin World Games Online. 
Before we go any further with this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Squarespace is the ultimate platform for building and developing your own website. These days, it's so important to have a good website. It's your shop front. If your website's slow, unresponsive, and just confusing, you turn off a lot of customers and in turn, a lot of cash. However, Squarespace's easy to use platform makes it easier than ever to have an amazing functioning and looking website. With tons of things built into it, such as members only content, email marketing, as well as mailing lists, you won't need to hire someone to make your website. I'm currently using Squarespace for a top secret project I'm working on. And I must say, I actually enjoy using it. So be sure to check out squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant and to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. Jump forward six years to 2003. And by now the world of MMORPGs had truly exploded. And in 1999, a game by the name of EverQuest had been released. In this game, there was one character called the Sleeper, which basically was this monster that was fast asleep. And if you woke it, it would go on a murderous rampage of the whole game. Kerafirm has awoken from its slumber and he is angry. Which would progress the storyline of the game itself. However, Waking the Sleeper was a one-time event. And on all but one server, this game event had been triggered. Ralos Zek stood as the last and only server to not trigger the Sleeper. However, on November 15th, a lizard monk by the name of Stinkfist decided it was time to wake the Sleeper. Stinkfist and the boys had a very small clan called the Curse, and word had spread around the server that they were going to wake the sleeper. You know, this was considered like a major wrong on the server, it was against the moral code. However, nonetheless, the top three guilds on the server assembled about 180 players with the intention to try and wake and kill the sleeper. Terrafin was immune to magic and had immense amounts of HP. The players brought a metric ass ton of resurrectors and simply had melee club him to death. Die and get rezzed again to repeat the clubbing. After 3 hours and 15 minutes of combat, by now it was expected that the sleeper should have obliterated everyone and started its murderous rampage of the whole world. But somehow, the server was winning. And in fact they had got the sleeper down to just 26% of its health left. And then suddenly, the beast completely disappeared. Over those three hours, all of the levels, the experience points that the players had gained had just disappeared. This moment defied all known MMORPG precedent because something very fishy had happened. The devs were so pissed by this that they despawned the dragon to keep his legacy intact right in front of the players. This was a shocking discovery and obviously all of the players were in complete uproar. This uproar led to Sony having to issue a formal apology to the server and then to make amends they respawned the sleeper. November 17th 2003. Now over 200 players gathered to beat the resurrected sleeper. Players that had quit the game had come out of retirement to come and be part of this major event. After many hours of battle, the sleeper was slain and the server of Ralosek had won its own battle against Sony. Funnily enough, the sleeper never dropped any loot because it wasn't planned that it was ever going to die. But what was a tragic event of Sony tyrannically getting involved in the game was seen as this victory of the players of EverQuest against Sony. However, it would be in the following year, in 2004, where gaming would change. Forever. Alright, oh, thumbs up. Ready, guys, Let's or... do this. Leroy Jenkins! In as early as 2005, a viral clip was going around of Leroy Jenkins charging a raid on his own and just getting his team completely obliterated. This clip turned out to be later staged, but it would be very shortly after that that one of the most fascinating moments in gaming history ever would occur on September 13th, 2005, with the Corrupted Blood Plague Outbreak. So the law here is that there was a blood god by the name of Hakkar the Soul Flayer, who was the final boss in a brand new raid area called Zolgurub. Hakkar would sap health from players to heal himself, causing damage to the players over time. The effect was called corrupted blood, and it could spread from one player to another if they stood close enough just like a real virus. But they had overlooked something, and that was that when they were coding this new ability, it was designed to be isolated to this raid area. But what the developers had forgotten was that players often had with them pets. And so when the players left the area, they no longer had corrupted blood, but their pets did. And so these diseased pets would spread corrupted blood outside of that area in the normal game world. And so the virtual World of Warcraft had a pandemic on its hands. 
There were people running around, shouting in general chat to run away and don't come near. When that plague hit, people started staying out of the cities. They started grouping up in smaller groups. And this disease was spreading, players were dying, they were dropping dead, and the world had to respond to it in the same way we do in the real world. Dense urban areas were evacuated. Healer players would volunteer their healing abilities and work as doctors. The game developers themselves even suggested a voluntary quarantine for players. But you know, of course, just put yourself there. You've got an outbreak in a video game. You're probably 13 years old. You know what you and the boys are doing. You're gonna run around and pass it because it's funny. And another similarity to a real world pandemic is that you would have these players that would hear about what was going on and out of curiosity they would travel over to infected areas to see what all the hubbub was about, much like what reporters do when they report on an outbreak in a small village and bring it back with them. This outbreak was so similar to a real life outbreak. It, it came from animals, it's very common. And what's more is there was even asymptomatic players, so NPCs, non-playable characters, would carry the virus and spread it without showing any signs that they had it. And so you might wonder what was the devastation caused by this plague. Well, it turned out over 4 million players died to this. This incident had so many parallels to real life pandemics that legitimate epidemiologists from the real world studied it. There were researchers from the University of North Carolina and Tufts who published studies on it and even the CDC contacted the game developers Blizzard and asked for statistics on how this virtual pandemic spread. After all this chaos, ultimately game developers patched a reset that would fix the bug, which would have been handy if we could have done the same. As World of Warcraft recovered from this plague, another game was growing in popularity. You see, for lads like me, who had really shitty PCs growing up, like my computer would catch on fire if I tried to boot up the World of Warcraft loading screen, there was an alternative, RuneScape. RuneScape was like your Audi's own brand version of World of Warcraft. But nonetheless, the culture and the history of RuneScape is very rich. And in that history holds one of the most iconic tragedies in video gaming history ever. And that was the Falador Massacre taking place on none other than the 6th of the 6th, 06, on the RuneScape World 111. A new skill had recently been introduced to RuneScape, the skill of construction, where players could make their own houses. Now, like every skill that is introduced to RuneScape, a race very quickly starts. For the first person to hit the skill level cap of level 99. Having a level 99 on RuneScape was like your blue check mark on social media. It was a badge of honor, and what came with it was a skill cape. And one player was in the driving seat to reach level 99, and his name was rather ominously cursed you. So as cursed you hit level 99 there was a party to celebrate his achievement and many players flocked to his house and one of those players in attendance was none other than Duriel321. The party at Cursed Jews was getting out of hand. There was way too many players so he decided to kick people out of his house. However this decision would spark hell in the world of RuneScape. You see, as a few of these players were kicked, they realized that for some reason, they were able to attack other players in what was supposed to be safe areas in RuneScape. And what's more is those players couldn't defend themselves. One of those players was Juriel321. So Juriel arrived at the doors of a town called Falador. And as he and his friend stepped through into Falador, they unleashed hell. The ticket came in, it said someone's running around Falador killing people. Oh, there's, there's open world PvP, people are getting killed outside your house. Instantly they would target high level players wearing very valuable items and kill them mercilessly. There was this iconic video uploaded to YouTube, recorded on Hypercam 2, edited to an absolute anthem which was called Planet Hell by Nightwish, which just showed Duriel's rampage attacking these innocent people. I remember watching it. It was emotional because you knew what it felt like to have all your items stolen from you like that. No! Are you f***ing kidding me? You years and years of hard work earning the money to buy all these items was gone in a matter of seconds. One of those items being a yellow party hat worth approximately 50 million gold in the game. This massacre went on for hours and it was early morning in England where the game developers Jagex had their headquarters. And luckily somehow the mods came aware of this and were paid overtime to go into work to kick as many players as possible involved in this bug. By the time the mods had got into the game, Juriel's massacre had reached all the way into Edgeville. And then finally, he was locked out of his account. Eventually, the bug in the game was fixed, but it was too late. The damage had already been done. Millions and millions of GP worth of equipment was lost in this disaster. RuneScape themselves had to release a statement about the event and saying that they couldn't refund items. Basically, because too many people would have just lied. Everyone that was involved in this glitch was banned from the game, with Jurial321 being permanently IP banned from the game forever. 
And I remember this because I was a player of the game at the time, and this tragedy was felt all around the game. I'm pretty sure a couple of players had a minute silence for it. But it would be 10 years on from the Falador Massacre, where Jagex, or Jagex, I forget how you meant to say it, would actually implement this story into the lore of the game. On the 10 year anniversary of this event, Old School RuneScape's Twitter account tweeted, we are having some major issues with World 666. Please bank your items and do not approach him. That last bit being a sentence that the mods that were involved at the Falador Massacre were telling all the players to protect them from losing their items. And so on this anniversary event, you could go to Falador and fight Drill 321. All the while the song Nightwish by Planet Hell would play in a RuneScape remix. It was pretty epic. So let's just take a moment for all the victims of these tragedies. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and watch this video right here.